Howdy folks, welcome back to Integration by Parts. Here we're going to look at the following three examples. So we have a natural log in the mix and we also have an exponential function in the mix. And it looks like we also have a definite integral in there for the second one. So let's go. So this first one here, x times ln x, we don't really have much choice in how we split the function up. So we split it down here between the x and the ln x. And we get a choice now of making one f and one g prime. So one side we're going to make f and the other side we're going to make g prime. And we're not really given any hints as to what to do here. So let's just go ahead and go in order. So starting on the left, let's say that x is going to be f, and then let's say that ln x is going to be g prime. So I'll write in ln x, yeah, I'll write in f as well as x. Now to go from g prime to g, here I have to integrate. So I have to say, well, what's the integral of ln x? And I'm not too sure. So let's just do this one first. On the left hand side to go in this direction, I have to find the derivative. So the derivative of x is just one. So that's nice. But the integral of ln x, now you may know it, I and we may work this out a little bit later, but the integral of ln x is not easier. It's actually a little bit more complex. So I know it, so I could write it in, it's x, Let's write it in, keep our colors. So it's x ln x minus another x. So I know that to write it in, but now if you recall from before I said, at this point you wanna mentally jump ahead and think, you're gonna to have to calculate this secondary integral and the second integral is multiplied on the bottom row. So using this shape, we have our original integral and then we have a backwards z, so then these two, and then the bottom row is my extra integral. And so what I've done there is I've actually added complexity because I would be looking for the integral of this. And I think, hang on, I'm already looking for x ln x. So actually, this doesn't help me. So that's leading me down a path of more work. And that's okay. Integration by parts is a strategy. It's not guaranteed to get you to the integral. So let's just back up all the way to the beginning. And let's say that f is ln x, and let's say that g prime is x. So now if g prime is x, Moving down here, I have to integrate. So recall your standard integrals here. This is going to become x squared over two. x squared by two. So now what's f at x? That's ln x. Moving down, I have to differentiate. So the derivative of ln x is one over x. Okay, and now, I mean, it doesn't, it looks a little bit simpler because I only have one term on the right hand side. So actually, I'm, I'm happy with that. If I'm thinking ahead to my integral on the bottom row, I have to multiply these together. Okay, let's go ahead and sub in these pieces. So I have ln x times g of x, which is x squared by 2. So this one, x squared by 2. Nice multicolored brackets there, minus the integral, and then along the bottom row, I have one over x, and then x squared by two multiplied. So x squared by two, and then I have one over x. Okay, let's keep going. So this first one, I can write the x squared out front, all over two. I can't do too much else with that term. But when I look at the second term, this integral, I have an x on the bottom, and I have two x's upstairs. So I can simplify this to be minus 
Let's take the one half out front. And then the integral of what's left over is just x. So now simplifying the whole thing, x is going to integrate to x squared over 2. And that over 2 with the 1 half will become 1 quarter. And then I have x squared. So maybe I'll write the whole thing in the numerator. x squared over 4 plus c. Okay, here we have a definite integral. So how are we going to attack this? Well, I see an e to the x, and I like e to the x because it has an easy integral. So if I pop e to the x in here, straight away I can integrate it to itself. And then moving right along, x squared differentiates to 2x. And thinking ahead, I'm going to find the integral here of 2x times e to the x. So I'm not too sure about that because then I just am looking for x squared times e to the x and then I have 2x times e to the x. So let's back it up and try it the other way. So let's try f at x as e to the x, the derivative, e to the x, and then let's put x squared here integrate, I get x cubed over 3. And then my second integral is e to the x times x cubed over 3. So just contrasting these two scenarios, think about which one would be easier to integrate. So in the first option, we had x by itself times e to the x, now we have x cubed. So it's x compared with x cubed. Okay, so hopefully you chose the first option as the easier to integrate. So let's go ahead and set up the first option. Okay, so I've set this up using the first option that we selected. So I'm looking at this integral and now I have, I brought the two out front, that's just a constant, and now I have the integral of x times e to the x. Well, this looks an awful lot like something that we just did. So here I am in example one of the last session and we see here that the integral of x times e to the x, we already solved this using integration by parts and it came out to x e to the x minus e to the x. So let's just go ahead and sub that in. So x e to the x minus e to the x. So I made that substitution. Let's put in my other variables that I have in here. And don't forget your constant. And I think that I'm done, except for maybe cleaning some of this up. So we have quite a few terms here, and you may want to factor out an e to the x, which shows up in every term, okay? But that's just personal preference. Now you may recall that this is a definite integral. So at this point, we would evaluate from minus one to one, so let's go ahead and set this up. I'll do one more step. So I remove the constant and I just put in my limits to evaluate that. So I'll leave that up to you as an exercise. All right, one last one for this session. Let's dig in. We have ln x over x. So when you split this up, think of 1 over x by itself, and then times 
the natural log. So that's how you can choose between f and g prime. Now, we saw this before that if I choose ln x to be g prime, I'm adding complexity because that integral introduces another term. So straight away, I'm going to shy away from that and I'll just write the whole thing in one color. We're gonna put ln x here and the derivative is one over x. So that means that g prime is one over x. And now to get to g, well, yep, I have to integrate. And what does this look like? Well, the integral of one over x, and we kind of have like a symmetric universe happening here going across each other, right? So that's okay. That integral is ln x. So let's go ahead and write it out and see what it looks like. So this equals fg on the diagonal, so that's ln x times ln x, subtract the integral. And then on the bottom row, we have ln x over x, and that's it. So looking now here, that looks oddly suspicious. Where have we seen ln x over x? So that is exactly what we're looking for. So let's write out the whole equality. So integral ln x over x, and we can see here the symmetry. These are the same terms. So what can we do here to solve this? What we're going to do I'll give you a second here to ponder this. There's a neat trick. Notice here that this is a whole independent term minus the integral of ln x by x. Well, what if we add the same term to both sides? Add not just ln x by x, but add the integral. Yeah, why not? Let's add that integral. And then on the right hand side, we have minus this integral and we have plus this integral. So those two are gone. And on the left hand side, I have plus the integral and plus the integral, right? And so even though you don't know what that evaluates to, if you imagine this as a like term, so this is just I'm trying to draw a carrot. This is just a carrot that maybe looks more like a baguette. And then we have another carrot over here and we're adding them together. So we have baguette carrot plus baguette carrot and we get two of them. So we can simplify this. On the left now I have two times the integral ln x by x equals, and on the right, well, I also have two, but these are multiplied. So this can be ln x squared, like so. And now my original integral, I need one more step here. I need to divide both sides by two. And that should be exactly what I was looking for. So this is a real neat trick that we've done here with integration by parts, noticing that one of these terms is exactly the integral that we're looking for. Manipulate that equation until you solve for what you're after.